Welcome to our lecture online. Now you may notice that this is very similar to the one we did before, except instead of having a plus there, we have a negative sign there, which makes the relationship between the sides and the angle in the triangle a little bit different. Notice we have the adjacent side to the angle is theta, and the hypotenuse is x, and the opposite side has the square root of x squared minus a squared, so the trick substitutions will be just a little different. Notice we have the cosine of the angle theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse, which when we solve for x is equal to a over the cosine of theta, which is equal to a times the secant of theta. And the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side over the adjacent side. Now we can begin to substitute into our integral, except maybe for one more thing, we need a dx here, so we need to take the derivative of x. So when we do that here, we can say the dx d theta is equal to the derivative of the secant of theta times a. So we have a times the derivative of the secant, which is equal to the tangent of theta times the secant of theta. And then we move d theta over here. We have an expression for dx now. So let's go ahead and make that substitution. So this would be equal to the integral. In the numerator, we have a dx, which is a tangent of theta secant of theta times d theta and in the denominator the square root of x squared minus a squared can be written as a times the tangent so we write this as a times the tangent of theta notice that the a's cancel out the tangent of theta cancels out and we're left with the secant of theta d theta and that we remember how to integrate from a previous video so now we have to remember that the integral of the secant of theta is equal to the natural log of the tangent of theta plus the secant of theta. Of course, we have a constant of integration. I'll call it C1 because I think we need to adjust it later. So now, since we have this in terms of theta and our original problem was in terms of x, we need to substitute back in. So for the tangent of theta, we're going to write this. And for the secant of theta, we're going to write x over a. So this becomes equal to the natural log of tangent of theta can be written as the square root of x squared minus a squared over a, plus the secant of theta can be written as x over a. And we have a cross of integration. Now notice that we can write both of these over a single denominator. So this can be written as the natural log of the square root of x squared minus a squared plus x in the numerator divided by a in the denominator. And now that we have the natural log of a fraction, that can be written as the natural log of the numerator minus the natural log of the denominator. So this can be written as the natural log of the square root of x squared minus a squared plus x minus the natural log of a plus a constant of integration. And of course you realize that the natural log of a is just a constant. We can combine those two right as a single constant. So this can now be written as the natural log of, oop, let me write like this, the natural log of x squared minus a squared plus x plus a constant of integration. And this then becomes the result when you take the integral of dx over the square root of x squared minus a squared. So notice a slightly a difference in the way we approach the trick substitutions, but with a similar result, and that's how it's done.